Hey everybody, it's Erin Reed from Erin Reed Makes and let's talk about my top five card making tools for 2023. This is one of my favorite videos to make with so many amazing crafty tools out there. This is my top five in no particular order. I can't wait to show you what has stayed from the past years and what is brand new and also what my wish list is for 2024. Let's get started. Ready for the big drum roll? The first one is gel plates. Now, I don't use them in the traditional sense. I tend to use them a little bit differently and it all has to do with card making and ink blending and stencils. Let me show you. These come in a variety of different sizes. I prefer the six by six or the eight by 10 for card making specifically. And let me show you how I actually use these. They're fantastic. If you've never been exposed to a gel plate, this is by Gel Press. It's a gelatin plate. It's squishy, it's stretchy, and you can do all kinds of wonderful mixed media on this. But I'm using it as a sticky mat that I can do all kinds of of ink blending on and I don't have to worry about getting my mat dirty. So what do I mean? So first of all, if I have a sheet of paper like this, guess what? It doesn't fall off. The sheet of paper is sticking to there because it's nice and clean and I can easily come and clean it. A little bit of water, a little bit of paper towel and boom, it's cleaned and it's no big deal. So that's the best part about if you get anything mucky on there. I can come in with my stencil and I can stick this down and make sure it's nice and sticky and it's not gonna wiggle around on me. So as much as I'm moving this, look, it's not wiggling. I can pick it up, I can go to the next stencil, I can go to the next frame, I can put this down or pay no attention to the mucky stamp block. But if I wanted to come in and do a direct stamp onto here, it also gives me a little bit of give as I'm coming in to stamp and it's not just on my hard table. And this I can take and go wash a lot easier than my actual workspace. So it just gives me a nice base to work on. I can also use it as a paint palette. If I wanna put a little bit of paint on here and I wanted to add some accents to my cards, I could also do that as well. And then it's really super easy to clean off. Now, if this size is too small, then I can upgrade it to the bigger size. This is like an eight by 10. You can actually fit almost a full sheet of paper on here. Again, it could be used for so many more things than just this, which I love tools that are not just a one trick pony. So let's say I want to stencil on here. I can come in and my entire stencil stays put. I can either do the entirety of the whole thing. That's why I like the bigger one because it has room for everything to stick down. Or if I wanna go off center with it, I've got room for that as well. So let's see this actually in action with my pick number two. So my pick number two, it's actually a tie between two different tools, one which I've been using for many a year, and the second one is brand new. Blending brushes and paper pouncers. These have totally tied for the second place because I do switch interchangeably between these two different tools, and it really just depends on the kind of stencil or the kind of project that I'm doing depends on which tool I'm gonna grab. Best way to describe it is let me show you these guys in action. Let's talk about the blending brush first. I have a whole plethora of these that are in color families, all from light to dark. Here you can see a nice big range, but I do have a ton of these. And for some, I even have a special little mark on them because I ran out of purple, but I wanted a lighter purple or darker purple. So I have these little marking tools from Make It By Marco and they're fantastic. But for the most part, I tend to stick with the color families and these are super easy to get on Amazon. I believe I've bought 12 to 15 of them for like 10 bucks. And I've bought two or three different sets of these because I needed more colors because I didn't want to have just one green for green. I wanted to have a light green and a dark green and a medium green because I use them a lot. We're gonna show blue real fast. Now, the quality of ink with your blending tool, I believe does make a big difference. I am a thorough believer in a good quality ink and this is actually my pick number three is my ink. And I have fallen in love with the Catherine Pooler inks. These inks are phenomenal. They have a foam pad, which is great. I'm going to get my fingers mucky, but it's a foam pad. So that means that when I come in with my blending brush, I'm actually coming down in there. I'm getting more ink on the brush itself. And it really just has a lot of uses. We're going to come back to all the amazingness of these ink pads. When you're ink blending, again, this is the mat. Super simple. It stays put. See how I'm not even holding it down. I could if I wanted to, but it is staying put and it is not moving as I'm coming in and ink blending. It is fantastic, I love this. I can go darker by pushing harder or I can go lighter by pushing lighter. It really just depends. I can come in and do big spaces. So here I've gone really dark. I'm gonna get even more ink and go darker. So I can do lots of wonderful shading and I can blend colors from one color to another. Again, with stencils and ink blending or if I just wanted to do a good background or anything like that, 
I love these blending brushes. But I also said I loved the paper pouncers. These are by Picket Fence Studios and I got to pick these up when I was at Creativation in 2023. She handed these to me, so I was gifted these versus purchasing them and I have absolutely fallen in love with them. So basically what they are is it's a little container and there is a wide variety of colors. There is one for every color family in the main colors and there's also a gray, a brown and a black. And it's got a little handle on there that matches the container and then you have this little foam piece. So this is actually like a beauty foam brush. So I have a lighter blue and I am very tempted to pick up another set of these because I feel like I don't have enough colors for all the different ranges of colors, just like with the blending brushes, to me, more the merrier. They're coming out with a mini size. So this is actually the larger size, but there's a mini size that is just coming onto the market. So the storage of these, I will say, is a little bit cumbersome, but the minis should have a much easier way of being stored. So, but I'm probably gonna pick up the minis for my second round. Now, how do these work? Basically, we're gonna use the same blue so you can see the difference. This is the same color I have used. And you're gonna come in and you're going to, instead of blend and go in circles, we are going to pounce. So it's very cool. You can get all kinds of really cool designs and it's much easier for anybody who's got difficulties, like if they have arthritis or they have a hard time with the blending brush and putting too much force. This is just literally up, down, up, down. Anybody can do this, kids can do this. This is super, super simple. I absolutely love it. Now that I've done all this pouncing and everything, let's actually take a look at what we got. Look how cool. So I can still get light and dark and I can get light and dark here. The downside is that if you notice right in here, you can start seeing that there's like little circles. Sometimes I don't wanna see the circles, which is why I will go back to my blending brush versus having the circle motion because I don't, especially for a larger space like this, I don't like the pouncers. I prefer the blending brush because I can really get in there and make sure it's nice and even and blended. But for small detail pieces like the rest of this stencil, I feel it's fabulous. There really is no comparison. I feel like I can go for either direction. This is easier, I will say, because this one, you have to finesse the pressure. So it just depends on what you like, but I will say I do like them for different reasons. Now, if you were wanting to ink blend, just on your paper, you really have to get in there. Let's say I wanted to coat the entire thing. Okay, you've got some splotchy moments on here. But if I come in with my pouncer, I can cover this entire space a whole lot faster, but I do get the rings. So it really is like, if I wanted to underwater sea and I wanted bubbles, this would be awesome for bubbles. But you can also do a combination between the two. So I can really kind of come in and like even it out. So it just depends on the look you're going for. You could also just have circles, like that could be part of a design. So it really is giving you a lot more versatility with your tools. Now let's talk a little bit more about the inks. Catherine Pooler has a wide variety of inks. This is just a few of the ones that I have collected over the past couple of years because I have absolutely loved it. I'm a firm believer in trying out a couple of them versus buying the whole collection. So I actually started out with these two colors about four or five years ago, dabbled into the inks, but then I really fell in love with ink blending specifically with stencils. And I was at Creativation 2023 and Catherine Pooler and Crafters Workshop, the stencils that I love, teamed together and I was using both the products at the same time and I fell in love. It was amazing. I was hooked. So let's talk about some other fun things you can do with the Catherine Pooler ink. Now there are a couple of different sizes to these ink pads. This is actually the larger size, but there is a small mini one, which I think is perfect if you're wanting to try out the inks in a smaller size, just to see if you like them. You also can get re-inkers for your ink pads so you don't have to keep buying new cartridges each time. All right, so let's see it in action. As any good ink pad, you can obviously stamp. Now, one thing if you notice, especially when you get up nice and close, is that you can really push into the stamp. So you don't have to push hard, just super lightly, and you have a wonderful amount of ink on your ink pad. So you can come in and it's just a light tap. That's all you need. And look how easy that is, isn't that awesome? Just a quick light tap, 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 and you are good to go and boom, you have a wonderful transfer. So just like any other ink pad, you can stamp with them. You just need to have a nice light touch because it is a foam pad. But what's also amazing about the foam pad is that because it is foam, and again, this is why I love my gel plate, is I can come in and I can transfer that ink onto paper and now I have a colored sheet of paper that matches whatever I just stamped. I don't have to go hunt for that perfect color. 
I've just made it, which is fantastic. Or I can now die cut out these elements or I can do whatever I want with them. So super versatile ink. I love it for ink blending. I love it for stamping, for making your own background to match whatever you are doing for your card making. These are phenomenal. Crafty tool number four is all about storage. So I love having all these amazing tools, but they are not useful to me unless I can find a good way to store them. Speaking of which, how I store all my blending brushes. Now I've gotten to the point where my blending brushes are getting more and more and more because I keep wanting to have a different color variety, or I might want to have a bigger size blending brush, or I might want to do a tiny blending brush. Bring on the Ballerina Brush Caddy by Make It By Marco. I was given this a couple years ago and I have had it in the back over here and you can actually see I have another variation there, but that one is limited to only having a certain number of brushes and I outgrew it. So bring on the big guy. Not only does it have a, a Lazy Susan so I can swivel it around, but it also, this one has three tiers, but you can add more. All these little brushes fit in here phenomenally. I absolutely love it. And I can fit, let me count them, 10 brushes per level. Let me show you how to put it together. This is your basic stand. Like I said, it's got a little lazy Susan and this can fit 10, but if you wanna add extra levels and you can fit really as many levels as you want, I think it says up to five, but you could keep going because you can keep buying more of these little guys. All you do is place it in here and then lock to put it in place. And now you've got two separate levels. All of these are exactly the same. And guess what? These are all made in house here in the United States by Make It By Marco. He's custom designed his own machines and he's fantastic. And if you just notice the few colors that I have here, there are many, many more, including blue, green, yellow, red, white, you name it, including, I love this teal color, but you just keep on stacking them in there. Super simple. And if you want to unstack them, you just go in reverse. See? Easy peasy. I get to load it. And then this is where you can have all kinds of fun loading in. I mean, they just, they go in easy. I can spin it around. You can decide which ones go on which level. You can reorganize them. And the best part about this is that not only is it handy storage, I can see all my blending brushes, which I use pretty frequently. It also makes sure that none of the brushes are touching each other. So therefore they're not gonna get mucky and yucky and transfer color from one to the other. Case in point, when I pulled it out, see how there's a little bit of blue on there? This wouldn't happen if I kept it in there. But you know what? It's all for the video. <laughs> but now I've fully used up this entire storage because all of my blending brushes are in this. But the best part is, is I can buy more tiers to go even higher. Only problem is, not sure if the space I have back here can go any taller. Maybe one more level or I have to find a new home for them. We'll see. Storage is a big deal, including my crafty desk. And on any given moment, my crafty desk is a mess. Let me just give you a sneak peek. There's usually sh stuff just shoved off to the side. I've got, you know, all my basic things. Look, all the things that were just coming from the video I just showed you. I mean, there's stuff everywhere. I even have storage over there that piles over and falls down. It's a problem. So with crafty storage in mind and also real estate on my desk, because I definitely tend to run out of space and while I'm card making, I'm picking up and moving things around, found a solution. This is a brand new list item also from Make It By Margo. I love that he comes up with the most amazing things to help solve our crafty storage solutions. This is a tape and tool tote. Let me show you how it works. All right, now this is already fully loaded and this one is catered specifically to the size that fits the Xyron Mega Runner. There is one that fits the ATG and there's also one that fits the easy runner. So it just depends on what you like, but they're all the same idea. So let me show you how this works. Well, let me pull everything out first. Now, at any given moment, I'm gonna have these items out probably on my desk while I am crafting. And now it can all fit in this storage unit, which can go vertical instead of wasting all of my horizontal space or I'm hunting and trying to find where did that go? It's under that sheet of paper because I shoved it off to the side outside of the camera space or just my crafty space if I tend to leave my video area. So this right here fits awesome because it's got this little hingy space. I'm constantly measuring. So now I have a place that's not hiding under because oh my goodness, this gets hidden under stuff all the time or it gets flipped over it now has a home i either will grab my big scissors which i love but i also love my hinge scissors i do a lot of vinyl work and i'm always hunting for where this thing goes so it can now rest there not necessarily card making but i have put vinyl on cards before a little pliers they have a home a little picking tool because you never know when you have to do the weeding when you have your dies they can get weeded out and then i have another little picking tool that i love pens i have a pencil pens all those fun stuff they now have a home they can fit into all of these little spaces last couple of things i'm always in use for washi tape usually as a tool to help hold all of my dies down when i'm die cutting but also maybe as a mask and it can fit down here and then sometimes i just like to grab my little baby 
tape runner instead of my big guy and it can fit down there as well. But you know, that bottom storage, you can easily throw a pen down there. But no longer do you have to have your tools just laying all over the desk. They now can fit inside a nice little caddy that is super sleek and organized. And there's one personalized depending on the type of tape runner you have. Either the ATG, the Easy Runner, or the Zyron Mega Runner. Now, all the supplies that I have shown you, I have been using for the past little while and absolutely love them. I might've just gotten them in two, three weeks ago, but it's already a game changer. I like this guy. I mean, this is brand new and it is amazing because it really does help keep the space on my desk and not be so crazy. But there are some other tools that I have had on my wish list for a long time and either they've been back ordered or they just come out or I just haven't had a chance to get my paws on them yet. And this is my wish list for 2024. So the first on my wish list is the Precision Glue Press from My Sweet Petunia. So this has a trigger application that allows you to squeeze the trigger and apply the glue. Downfall is from what it looks like, it only uses a very specific shape of a bottle, but you can pull the trigger and it applies the glue nice and evenly, no longer having to shake the glue, squeeze the glue, have it be kind of weird. It really kind of fits the bill for a lot of the problems that I tend to have with wet glues. But there are some limitations, including the bottle size and also that it only can be a certain type of glue that can fit in there. It does have a little holder that you can place it in, which is really nice. I've not played with it. I've only seen it on screen, but I am dying to try it. Another item that has been on my wish list for a while is the Alta New Stamp Wheel. This is something that fits the bill for a lot of the items I already mentioned in here, like a sticky mat to put your paper down before you stamp or as I ink blend, but it also has a few other fun elements to it as well beyond just a sticky mat. It also allows you to come in and stamp without the stamp block wiggling or moving. No hinge required because it locks into place with the little grated teeth that it has around it or the wheel that it has around there. And because it has a geared system, I mean, lack of better terms, it is a gear, it allows you to place your stamp in the exact same position and then also go ahead and do layered stamps and it makes it really easy to pick up and clean and move without having to have a whole hinge system. It also has another little fun benefit, which is allowing you to stamp in one location ink up the stamp and then turn it like you're turning a dial or a gear and allow you to stamp around the circle just by moving the gears or the pegs in place. So you can get a really cool 360 effect by going from one section to the other. And meanwhile, your paper is sitting there on the sticky mat, not needing any kind of magnets. So you know, it's not going to move. This one I've been having my eye on for a very long time. It has just been waiting to be in production with the patent pending for a long time, but it is officially available. It's also been on my wish list for a very long time. Thank you so much for watching. If any of the products I have mentioned are of interest to you, links are down in the information section. They are affiliate links, which just means that you are helping support my channel. But I do always encourage you to use the supplies you have on hand because you just might have something in your crafting space that you can use in a different way. Like the gel plate. I had this thing for 10 years and I never used it any differently than as a mono printer until like this year. I mean, you never know what tool you might have that can have an alternate purpose. If you have a favorite tool that I have not mentioned in this video that is a total game changer, let me know. And as a heads up, I am looking for a new stamp cleaner. The one I was using is discontinued. I've got to find a new one. Thanks so much, everybody. Bye-bye.